Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, March 12th, 2023, which is the third Sunday of Lent. We thank you for tuning in this morning and glad you've joined us. Let's now take a quick moment to frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship today. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. <clears throat> Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the grace and the beauty of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, <clears throat> this gospel, John 4, 5 through 42, I'm going to tell you right now, it's literally longer than my sermon. <laughs> so, if you want to pause right now, get yourself another coffee, get something, and sit down and get ready, because this is going to be a little... A little while. So anyway, but it's a beautiful, beautiful text. So I want you to catch all of it. So now I'm going to read you from the contemporary English version this morning. So uh, the Holy Gospel according to St. John in the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And on his way, Jesus came to the town of Sychar. It was near the field that Jacob had long ago given to his son Joseph. The well that Jacob had dug was still there, and Jesus sat down beside it because he was tired from traveling. It was noon, and after Jesus' disciples had gone into town to buy some food, a Samaritan woman came to draw water from the well. Jesus asked her, Would you please give me a drink of water? She replied, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink of water when Jews and Samaritans won't have anything to do with each other? Jesus answered, You don't know what God wants to give you, and you don't know who is asking you for a drink. If you did, you would ask me for the water that gives life. And the woman said, Sir, you don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. Where are you going to get this life-giving water? Our ancestor Jacob dug this well for us, and his family and animals got water from it. Are you greater than Jacob? And Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again, but no one who drinks the water I give will ever be thirsty again. The water I give will become in that person a flowing fountain that gives eternal life. The woman replied, Then, sir, please give me a drink of that water. Then I won't get thirsty and have to come to this well again. And Jesus told her, Go and bring your husband. The woman answered, I don't have a husband. And Jesus replied, That's right. You're telling the truth. You don't have a husband. In fact, you've already been married five times, and the man you are now living with isn't your husband. And the woman said, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. My, answers, my ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say Jerusalem is the only place to worship. And Jesus said to her, Believe me, the time is coming when you won't worship the Father either on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans don't really know the one you worship, but we Jews do know the God we worship, and by using us, God will save the world. But a time is coming, and it is already here. Even now, the true worshipers are being led by the Spirit to worship the Father according to the truth. These are the ones the Father is seeking to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship God must be led by the Spirit to worship him according to the truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah will come. He is the one we call Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus told her, I am that one, and I am speaking to you now. The disciples returned about this time and were surprised to find Jesus talking with a woman. But none of them dared to ask him what he wanted or why he was talking with her. And the woman then left her water jar there and ran back into town, where she said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Could he be the Messiah? 
and everyone in town went out to see Jesus. While this was happening, Jesus' disciples were saying to him, Teacher, please eat something. But Jesus told them, I have food that you don't know anything about. And his disciples started to ask each other, What, well, has someone brought him something to eat? Jesus said, My food is to do what God wants. He is the one who sent me, and I must finish the work that he gave me to do. You may say there are still four months until harvest time, but I tell you to look around and you'll see that the fields are ripe and ready to harvest now. Because even now the harvest workers are receiving their reward by gathering a harvest that brings eternal life. Then everyone who planted the seed and everyone who harvests the crop will celebrate together. So the saying proves true. Some plant the seed and others harvest the crop. I am sending you to harvest crops in fields where others have done all the hard work. A lot of Samaritans in that town then put their faith in Jesus because the woman had said, This man told me everything I have ever done. They came and asked him to stay in their town, and he stayed on for two more days. Many more Samaritans put their faith in Jesus because of what they heard him say. And they told the woman, we no longer have faith in Jesus just because of what you told us. We have heard him ourselves, and we are certain that he is the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You know, one of the things that I really miss from... Uh, Pre-COVID days, it's stores that were open 24 hours. <laughs> Remember that? I used to love to go shopping uh, late at night because then, you know, I could take my time. I could avoid the crowds. And, and you know, even though I'm inherently a social person and I love talking to people and I go to the store for 10 minutes and come home two hours later, there are times when I just want to go in, get my stuff, come home, and not be bothered by it, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we all have that. So look, that's the image that's in my head as I as I look at this gospel, um, <laughs> this extraordinarily long gospel. Um, Jacob's well. This is where it's taken place. Jacob's well at noon is very much like Walmart at midnight. It deserted. But in this case, it's deserted because of the noonday heat. And, you know, that is probably precisely why this woman goes to the well right when she does. Hoping to escape those crowds, avoid people, draw her water in peace. She is, after all, reviled and outcast. Um, everyone hates her right now. Um, the last thing she wants at the well is more embarrassment, more harassment, more ridicule. So she goes over there the worst possible time of the day, which is the best possible time of the day for her. You know, get in, get the water, get out. I get that. Now on the other side of this gospel account, though, you have Jesus, who was also looking for an escape. He leaves the disciples to go get food. He leaves the crowds behind for a little while. He travels over there and he sits down to get some much needed peace and quiet at the well. So there he is. When the woman arrives, it's pretty certain that she figures she can, you know, just get her stuff and go, you know. Um, but then Jesus does the unthinkable. He speaks. Like, what? <laughs> but isn't that always the way it is? There she is. It's just the two of them. There's no way to avoid him now. And now they have nothing but time. <laughs> so, it has got to be even more frustrating for her than, than just her own community because Jesus here is breaking all the rules. Not only... Not only does a Jewish man never initiate a conversation with an unknown woman, a strange woman, but a teacher doesn't initiate a public conversation with any woman. And a Jewish person 
doesn't initiate a conversation with a Samaritan under any circumstances ever, ever. And yet, what we have here is the longest one-on-one -on -one dialogue recorded in all the Gospels. <laughs> wow. Now look, here's why this exact moment is so darn important. Listen, so a um, little history here now. For centuries, the Samaritans had been at theological war with the rest of the Jewish regions, right? It's in and, and centuries. And it's more than the fact um, that Samaritan Jews had assimilated with and intermarried with other ethnic groups who had moved into Samaria, you know, way back during the exile. So it's more than that. It's more than the fact that the Samaritan region had also supported the Roman military occupation. Um, it's, it's more than that. It's also that the Samaritans had built a temple in their own region on this place called Mount Gerizim because they felt that scripture pointed there instead of to Jerusalem as the center of worship. And if that's not bad enough, <clears throat> what is worse is back in the second century BC, 200 years before Jesus, this guy named Antiochus Epiphanes ruled and he forced everyone in all of his territories to worship him alone or die. Most of the Jews were stubbornly loyal and resisted his threats, right? <clears throat> and that caused a lot of problems. But the Samaritans, um, they eventually broke down and, and many of them uh, publicly renounced their Jewish roots in order to stay alive. So, because of all those things, <clears throat> and even more because the Samaritans had sold out, the Galilean Jews to the north and the Judean Jews to the south never again associated with Samaritans. For centuries, they were fighting. <clears throat> and it seems kind of foreign and weird, but you know this place because Samaria is in what is now called Palestine. So, uh, look, all of this, all of this is at play in this tiny moment where Jesus is having this conversation with the woman at this well. What in the world would he want to mess around with centuries of, you know, estrangement? Why was it so important for him to have this conversation right now? Uh, and ultimately, though, when they do begin to talk, you know, the woman starts to lament that Samaritans have been misunderstood and outcast. And they have. And then, and then she asks, um, she's a very wise person, and, and she cuts to the chase because she asks a very pointed and poignant existential question uh, in verse what, 20, I think it is. She says, hey, listen, you sound like a prophet. Um, now, answer me this. Our ancestors worshiped over here on Mount Gerizim, but you say the place where people have to worship is Jerusalem. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> Her question really is three words. Where is God? And Jesus' answer? <laughs> You're both wrong, he says. You're both looking in the wrong place, all of you. Specifically, he says, you worship what you don't know. <laughs> Do you? Do you know? <laughs> the Samaritans thought they did. So did the other Jews in the other two regions. So did the Pharisees. We're pretty sure we know by now too, right? Uh, the answer to her question. We know. And... All, in fact, all 140 different kinds of Lutheran denominations know where God is. In fact, all 45,000 different kinds of Christian denominations around the world, they all know. Right? Look, here's the thing. 
140 Lutherans, 45,000 different kind of Christian religions. We all think God worships on our mountain. And we've been arguing about it for centuries. It's so easy for us to forget that there's a lot of ways to interpret life. There's many different ways to interpret God. And there's many ways to interpret and process every experience we face. Centuries of hatred. Is there a Samaritan in your world, in your neighborhood, in your family? You know, and I read you all this, but I'll tell you what, today's gospel, one of the most important sentences in today's gospel, the gospel actually begins with a sentence before the gospel begins, and that is, Jesus had to go through Samaria. Now, after all I've just said, why in the world would Jesus ever go through Samaria? He didn't have to go through Samaria. There's plenty of other easier ways to go. Way less stressful, for sure. Nevertheless, there he was. And now I know why. He went there to reconnect that outcast woman to her community because she went back, started talking about Jesus and brought a lot of people in to meet him. But he also, so he wanted to reconnect the woman to her community, but more importantly, she wanted to re, he wanted to reconnect that woman to him. And because of that trip, we too are called to go through our own Samarias as well rather than taking the easy way around our lives. But, but tell you what, here is the real reason Jesus went there that day. He went there to answer her question. He went there to answer our question. Where is God? God is waiting at the well because God is thirsty too for you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen and now may the peace of the Lord be with you always take some time to share that peace with the people sitting around you this morning watching with you today Go outside, um, talk to somebody, talk to your neighbor, talk to somebody you see at the store, uh, on the street, on the sidewalk. Um, make a call, send a text, because we never know who might be thirsty for the Holy Spirit's presence in their lives right now. Hmm. And in the meantime, gathered into one by that Holy Spirit. Let us boldly pray the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for tuning in this morning, and I pray that you have a, a spirit-filled and, and peaceful week coming up. And look forward to seeing you either right here on video or right over there in church next Sunday. God bless you all.